matching incredible students to great colleges one story at a time. Welcome to the College Match Podcast. Today I'm introducing you to Blanca, a young entrepreneur from Lawndale, California. Blanca grew up with what she calls the goalkeeper mindset, relating it to some of the leadership roles she's taken on in her family, community, and at school. This young woman's core values are centered around wellness, mindfulness, and writing. She truly believes in the power of voice. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode. And if this is your first time tuning in, take a quick listen to our intro episode, where you'll learn why we started the podcast and more about our organization, College Match Los Angeles. So to all the dreamers, believers, and achievers, teachers, educators, and supporters, thank you for tuning in. Let's get started. Welcome, everybody, to the College Match Podcast. Uh, It's a pleasure to introduce you all to Blanca today. I'm excited to to share with the audience what you're doing now um, as a high school student. But before we do that, uh, I definitely want to start off by sharing a little bit of your background. Can you tell us uh, where you come from, um, what your community looks like, who you call, you know, what you call home and your family? Yeah, so my name is Blanca. I am 17 years old. I was born in Guatemala, raised here in the United States, uh, more in the Utah, Londo. Um, I go to Environmental Charter High School, and I live with my family here, and it's a total of six of us in our house. And I am the oldest of three kids. I have a younger sister and a younger brother. My grandma, my dad's mom, was the first one from her family and her village to come to the United States. She had to go through some difficult journey to get here, but she ended up um, in Los Angeles. My dad is her fourth child, so she had my dad here. And he was the first born in the United States from their family. He got into some trouble, which led to my grandma sending him back to Guatemala for two years. So he had to start over over there. Mm -hmm. But when he was there, he met my mom. Yeah, so this was like in 2000, right? And knowing um, that this was getting serious, they decided to have a baby. So the first baby that they had, my older sister Dulce, she she passed away in my mom's um, stomach yeah oh I'm so sorry to hear that yeah but as time went on um, the year that I was born was already 2002 Mm -hmm. so everything changed right Mm -hmm. he had to go to Guatemala because that's where I was born and he had to try to get me the dual citizenship and prove that he was the father and that's that was our journey to Guatemala you know it wasn't like my grandma's but it was definitely not the easiest either. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we came to Londo and I've lived here ever since. (laughs) My dad and my mom, I say, is what have, like their hard work is what has shaped me to be the person and thinker that I am. My dad actually works two jobs. He is a goalkeeper coach at night and then a sales rep representative in the morning but his pride and joy is soccer and goalkeeping so I think that um, what he has taught me with his business and hard work and what my mom has taught me in her hard work and in her jobs is like one of the biggest memories I carry with me. Mm. And tell me a little bit about your mom and, and what does she do? Yeah so ever since you know, my mom was in Guatemala. She always had a passion to, to teach from Guatemala. Her teaching credentials, transcripts, all that, it didn't equal the same to what it is here. Mm. So she had to start over here. Um, At that time, and still today, it's hard finding jobs that will, you know, she struggles with language. It's a barrier, right? So that's something that has put some limits, but she has found jobs that she's really good at and that she thrives in and, you know, they're authentic to what she loves doing most. Blanca has a very strong relationship with her father. Unfortunately, last year, their family went through a scare when it came to his health. Right before they were going to leave on a family trip, 
they received some bad news that changed Blanca's and her dad's life forever. So last year in August, my dad faced a little complication with one of his underlying health conditions. He has diabetes, right? Type 2. So he, um, he really has to take care of himself and, you know, his health. But that day, my mom was looking at his feet, you know, checking that everything was okay. And she found a little black spot and you know that sets off alarms and red flags and everything so um my mom took him to the er you know just to check maybe it was like sharpie mark you know we thought we tried to think the best but mm -hmm. it turned out to be gangrene gas and oh this gosh. is like how scary yeah this is an infection that travels fairly fast and eats up the skin right and being diabetic like it, that's really dangerous you know it could lead to amputations of not only like the toes but like the leg it wasn't getting better there was no blood flow going to two of his toes right so they had to amputate and it was hard so from then on my mom was like we're setting rules like I don't want this to happen to any of my kids I don't want it to progress with my husband we're gonna do meal preps <laughs> I don't care um, we're gonna do it so from then on is when like she really incorporated incorporated here in the house and you know she's been doing it ever since that's one of the things that you know um also helped us with our health and reconnecting back with ourselves especially since like it was really it was really bad before how has your experience with all of that shaped you yeah so when everything started with like my dad's recovery I kept it all in. I didn't really like talking about it. The only person that I would talk about it was with like my best friend. And you know, it was a lot on him and I I was I just didn't want to talk about it. I didn't think that I needed help and I didn't think that letting my teachers know that, you know, stuff was happening was so important. Um until one day I remember clearly it was in my apes class. I just broke down. Um, I was getting texts from my dad's nurses that would come in and, you know, clean his foot and everything. And it would be in the middle of class and I would have to take those texts and calls. And, you know, it was a strain, right? Um, I'm not blaming my mom for it. You know, it's not her fault that there's like a language barrier. And I, you know, I was like, just like put it on me. I'll do it. And, but it just came to be a lot until I told my teacher, my apes teacher, and he was like, it wouldn't help, it wouldn't hurt to talk to someone. Mm -hmm. And I was like, why would I talk to anyone? Like, I could do it myself. I, like, I can literally run events by myself. I don't need help. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that first step, that encouragement really um, shaped my thinking. So definitely, um, his what happened with my dad um even if it was like um scary it i think it allowed me to grow as a person and student into really um valuing help and it did kind of like contradict like the goalkeeper mentality because you know you put everything onto yourself but i think having both mentalities and putting the pros of both together is you know the right mentality for me thank you for sharing that because I like, <laughs> I like that comparison there it's really powerful so dad's amputation has not stopped him from building his goalkeeping business which has served hundreds of young goalkeepers in Los Angeles he's definitely a pioneer here in the South Bay for goalkeeper um, training and goalkeeper education and yeah that's where it all started moving closer to 2007 was when he established his goalkeeper academy and his company so he called it impact goalkeeper academy because his goal was to have an impact on any student athlete that crosses his path right so I love that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah so it's definitely something way bigger he has events and sessions about goalkeeper psychology and i think it's really evolved to like what student um, not even just soccer student athletes, but all student athletes should know about the sport and its psychology. 
and how it could, you know, really form you into the person you could potentially be. Do you feel like um, be having that kind of goalkeeper role in your family, does that relate at all to any roles that you play in your family? So yeah, like so being... Piece. It's a significant piece. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so even being the oldest, like I can connect that to goalkeeping, right? Um, being the oldest give, gave me a lot of responsibility. You know, I have to be the the one that they look up to. I can't really make mistakes. And with playing that role model to my siblings, I decided to um, take a bigger part into like my dad's goalkeeping academy. Mm -hmm. So with that, I became his ad administration, his admin. Yeah, so I give myself all the credit to building his um, Instagram. I was on iMovie. I was creating these um, videos for my dad and his goalkeepers to put on the Instagram. So I didn't have a social life. I had my dad's company. And keep in mind, I was like 12 years old, right? <laughs> it's what he focuses on the most now, right? He has close to 9,000 followers, and it's wow. all just goalkeepers. Uh -huh. Oh, how cool is that? Very yeah. Cool. Over the years, Blanca has developed the entrepreneurial spirit from her dad and the creativity from her mom. With both as her inspiration, she started a small, unique business of her own. So going into this quarantine, I used all of my savings from my job um and we got all the supplies and we even did so much research on which supplies would be the most environmentally friendly and the ones that you know wouldn't have such a big um, negative impact on the environment right so uh we called our company our creations co shop and this is our first product right here right. uh-huh beautiful it's a scented candle and with everything like um, you want the perfect packaging right so what we did was that we did spend time and you know money on what we decided to have the packaging be and it's this so we did spend a lot of time and yes, effort like creating it yeah the yeah and it's very unique mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah so I use the candle as like a metaphor, like you burn it and then like the scent is like the letting go. So all of the negativity is like um, just getting out of like what I have in my mind, right? And what made you think of that name? Yeah, so we came up with the name because uh, every gift that I give, I try to give it the most meaning, right? Mm -hmm. I don't. I I personally think that if you make something, it shows um, the value in it. So I was like, you know, call it our creations. We created the candle, you know, homemade. So um, we thought it had the perfect ring to it. So that's where the name came from. So that's a really great idea. Where's your business now? What's the status? Yeah, so the next batch is definitely coming up um, because the first batch was completely sold out. So it was the first wow, um, 24 yeah um so if you had any piece of advice for a future student or the next generation of entrepreneurs what would be that advice i would definitely say don't be scared to use your resources and don't be scared to ask for advice right i want to you know let it out there that youtube was definitely my best friend I, I'm not ashamed of it. I think that being able to say that and to inspire other people to, you know, do that is definitely one of the most important things. That is so inspirational. I love that <laughs> philosophy on, biz, on entrepreneurialism or entrepreneurship. I like it. In addition to her family, Blanca's small school, Environmental Charter High School, has made a big impact on her ideas of social change and community-based learning. So taking a, a fast forward step, um, tell me a little bit about what you're doing in high school and how you're staying engaged. Yeah, so I think that right now you would think that it's really hard, but <laughs> if you do put your mind to it, there's always things that could be improved or things that could change, right? Um, with high school, I at first I 
I was just the soccer girl, you know, I was on the soccer team. Um, and, you know, that was basically my identity. But moving on to my sophomore and my, um, my junior year, I really wanted to make a change with myself first and then help make a change in, in school. So I created this campaign um, called the Student Wellness Campaign because I am very passionate in, and I really want to demand change in the way that systems work and how they oppress us, right? So I was introduced to these discussions and topics mm -hmm. in the ethnic studies class, in the world history, in the English, in my 10th and 11th grade. And I decided to create this because I think that it's very important to have a base um, for students to be able to connect with other students that are also very passionate in fighting against the same injustices that either they uh, deal with, their family members, or the way that um, they're able to perceive or see society in the world. I love that. You mentioned earlier you have like an ethnic studies course at your high school and you have really, like, sounds like social justice is a really big um, initiative at your, am I, am I right? I, I think that's yes, a, definitely. very unique to a school. Going into that class, it was like, wow, you know, we're learning about things that are affecting people like me, people like my friends, you know, um, and we read an article how like the course was banned from some schools because, you know, people didn't want their students to know about these things and mm -hmm. about the history of people of color and underrepresented um, uh, identities, right? And with that, I was like, what? <laughs> Why are you not letting people learn about themselves? Why are you just letting the basic white history take over, of, um, you know, students' minds, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's what also inspired my thinking, my thinking to change and to be more active in my community. One of Blanca's teachers, Mr. McCurry, has become her mentor. He teaches 11th grade English, is the department chair at ECHS, and is a published author who focuses on the cultures and voices of underrepresented populations in America. It's been through his example that Blanca has developed such a strong voice on campus. She has a strong passion for student wellness and creating change, so much so that she even created a campaign to support her peers. With his class, right, I think that it has been, if one or if not that class has been the most powerful class I've ever been in um at first it was like it was scary um because there was so much real content that we went through we learn about things in English class like uh riots and um you know how people have stood up to the people in power and demanded change among authors like Paulo Freire, Octavia Butler, Yuriera and more, Mr. McCurry also has his students analyze court cases that have drastically impacted American society. Majority, really all the authors uh, I use in my class, um, be it essay, be it fiction, or be it informational text, are people of color. Um, I try to balance and make sure that I have an equal number of mujeres to men that are represented. Um, I also try to make sure that queer narratives are within um, my instructional pieces. And then on top of that, I try to have as much student voice as it is my voice. One of the ones that I struggled with the most was the Roe versus Wade case. Um, and I, I was like, why are we learning about this in English? But once I was, yeah, once I was like, you know, this person stood up for herself, for her body, that was like, that makes sense. Um, and having that role model in that class um, really, really also helped shape my thinking. And this, Mr. McCurry is, you know, one of the, um, in my opinion, one of the top teachers on campus. Like you mentioned, there, there's a powerful thing in being a teacher, right? You have so much, such a great platform to inspire, not just to teach, but to inspire and motivate and drive. But it all stems from how much you care. One of the most recent projects was that I was involved in, and it, it was 
trying to get an honest and research-based analysis of what teaching means in 2020 for communities of color. Blanca is talking about the student equity team, a group created by Mr. McCurry and some other fellow teachers to bridge the student voice on campus with that of administration. For the past few years, this group has been primarily student-led. The student equity team, or SET as we call it, um, again is a political project. Uh, they've done interviews with teachers, they've looked at uh, local data from LAUSD to charter schools, they looked at national data, um, they looked at college admissions rates, um, they looked at curriculum, um, they've read Paulo Freire, they've read, um, yes, <laughs> they've read uh, Prakash, they've read uh -huh. Roy. So we were going to have them present their findings and research at the school um, in, uh, in May. But obviously stuff started, you know, falling apart because of COVID and, you know, everyone had to like recycle and reimagine things. Mm -hmm. So Blanca in terms of her visual aptitude, in terms of her critical thinking, and in terms of her interview skills. Um, that's why she's part of the group. And again, these are skills that grew out of this process, this moment that we hadn't even visualized, but at the same time, we had seen that she had given us things that were like, it's just, um, she just has a skill set that you know uh, has value. Yeah, so stemming from, you know, things that I've learned in these classes and, from the way that Ms. Diaz and Mr. McCurry were able to um, inspire us to even, you know, care for how we are being taught and, you know, how students around us are being taught, that really opened my eyes into um, seeing how powerful student voices are. One of Blanca's biggest initiatives is her wellness campaign that she mentioned earlier. Using an intergroup dialogue model, the campaign is based off three primary goals. First, to have trained mediators in order to ensure a safe space. Second, knowledge of mindfulness and health. And last, which Blanca says is her favorite, writing. Writing in the form of letters, notes, and simple words of affirmation. I think my favorite one is the writing part. In my opinion, writing is very, very powerful. And this could be like um, any type of writing, like writing to someone in power or even writing a small note to someone going through something. I, um, and with this, I got my inspiration from one of the websites that I have um, participated in. It's called moreloveletters.com. So what this, um, this oh. platform does is that when you go to the website, there's like, um, there's paragraphs about people and the hardships that they've gone through recently, right? So I think that letter writing and writing in general is so, so, so powerful. I love and that. yeah, yeah. And one of the most recent, um, uh, I would say, projects that I've joined as well online is the letter to strangers. So it focuses on writing letters to people that have been um, dealing with vulnerability or um, mental health um, problems. It's like being an ally, I guess, and you're just there to lift them up. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like your club has really three core values, if, if I'm mistaken, but one of them is all about creating that safe space first, right? So it sounds like you really know a lot about, um, like I said, intergroup dialoguing and having difficult conversations, and that does include first creating a safe space, making sure folks feel comfortable in what they're about to share, and welcome, right? They have a voice. And then the second piece, I think, is like words of affirmation, right? And so, you know, I think writing to each other, documenting what you're learning, all of that sounds really important. Um, and then last, it just sounds about knowledge and understanding and um, learning from your facilitators and Mr. McCurry and your teachers, you know, what it means to be a young student with voice. So with all that to say, it sounds like you already have a really great base and foundation for um, <laughs> what it means to be successful in college. Um, what are you looking for in a college? So I'm looking for a small space that really listens to students and allows students to advocate for what they think is right for them and, you know, the people around them. So a social justice driven campus that could really back up their students. Sounds 
like you're a really busy girl. You are starting clubs, you're starting initiatives, uh, you, you help your dad and yourself with your own business. So what do you like to do for fun, Blanca? So besides making the candles, I do love making other things. And one of them is painting. If you're not already, this is a perfect time to tune into the video version of Blanca's podcast on our College Match YouTube page. There you'll see tons of pictures of Blanca in action, including the painting she's currently working on. It's a painting that I'm working on for my best friend. Oh, um, oh and gosh. Yeah. So it's painting by numbers. So oh, there's like... Okay. Wow. Yeah. Uh-huh. So it's really, really detailed. If you like go into it, it's really detailed. Yeah. Like I really have to like be careful and patient. And I think that with that, it really takes away, you know, some of the things that may be happening. Like it just lets me go into my own bubble. Nice. Talk about mindfulness. I the, the yeah. candles and the conversations <laughs> and the painting. I love this aura you have about you on, on mindfulness. Another thing that I've also really enjoyed is baking, and I incorporate that with, like, what I do with my siblings, too. Family, shape, or form, cooking in most Latino households is what brings us together, <laughs> so yes. it's, it's, it's that one thing that, that connects you with you and your siblings and just bringing it back to some of the, you know, sweet parts of life. <laughs> yeah. Now I, I really like to do a f- something called a flash round. This is one of my p- favorite parts of each interview. Um, and these are all questions that you may see in some of your college applications in some way, shape, or form. And they're really quick and short answers. So um, the first question I have for you is uh, if there was a movie character or somebody uh, or some sort of character uh, that could represent your life, who would that be? Yeah, um, Rocky, for sure. Um, <laughs> nice. First of all, I'm just glad that you know who Rocky <laughs> is. I love it. <laughs> yeah, definitely Rocky. I think that um, growing up watching Rocky with my dad, it, it was like really impactful to me. And I see myself as not a world champion, but someone that could really have an impact with my voice. You are a champion in a totally different <laughs> Blanca and that you you absolutely said it your voice is that driving force for you where his was his skill and his talent yours is your voice and so that's a great analogy and talk about perseverance and grit (laughs) Rocky establishes all of that really good okay my last question for you on the flash round is if you were creating a playlist of your life what would be one of the songs that would be on that playlist oh um definitely rise up Rise Up has oh, I um, Andre Day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so definitely Rise Up. I listen to this song um, when I am at the lowest point, and there's so many other songs too that I've listened to. Um, but I think that thinking about it right now, it's that song mm. um, because it it shows like that you will rise up from what you're going through, and you know, I think that's something that everyone should hear. Yeah, that is a perfect song, actually, I think, for our <laughs> time right now. And I think also a really great way to end the podcast today. <laughs> um, and before I do, is there any last um, kind of quote or piece of knowledge or inspiration that you'd like to share with the audience today? Yeah, I stand by the quote that I tell my parents, my siblings, or anyone that's going through a tough time. Um, that what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. So I stand by this because I believe that these past events and circumstances that we've gone through, either physically, socially, or emotionally, like they make you who you are, and they make you a better person because it allows you to grow. I love it. What a beautiful way. It's all about (laughs) collaboration and connection and wellness. (laughs) And wellness, yeah. And mindfulness. So thank you so much again today, Blanca, for um, sharing all of that with us, sharing your story and being open and brave today. Thank you so much. I have no doubt that a college is going to be very good to have you. (laughs) Thank you. I think it's very important that we take seriously not only what teachers are teaching young people, how they're doing it, but also why we're doing it. Wow. That conversation gave me the chills. 
talk about mindfulness. I used to work at a high school that practiced daily meditation, and I can't begin to tell you about the positive impact it made on our campus and our students. Blanca reminded me of what it means to pause and breathe during the toughest of times, and the power of what meditation can do. She will surely make a great impact on whatever college she attends next year. If you'd like to learn more about her father's Goalkeeper Academy, visit at Impact Goalkeepers Academy on Instagram. And similarly, if you'd like to support Blanca's small candle business, visit at Our Creations Co. Shop on Instagram. And special thanks to Blanca's teacher, Mr. McCurry, for making an appearance on today's episode. Stay tuned for another great student story coming your way. And thank you so much for tuning in to the College Badge Podcast. And if you like today's episode, please like and subscribe to our podcast. If you do, you'll get an update once a new powerful story is posted. And for more information about College Match and how to support the new students you hear from, visit www.collegematchla.org. I look forward to matching another incredible student to a great college next week, and I hope you'll join me for it. See you next time.